This is Jock. He's a silverback gorilla that weighs almost a quarter of a ton. And the only thing holding him up above my head is a mere five centimeters of glass. I'm Ross, and today we've come to the new gorilla house here at Bristol Zoo Gardens to take a look at the science of glass with everything from gorillas to smartphones. You may have heard that glass is not a solid, but a liquid. You may have even seen that in old buildings like here in Bristol Cathedral, that the glass appears thicker at the bottom than at the top, as if over 700 years that glass has slowly oozed down under the force of gravity. Well, I'm afraid that's a myth. When this glass was first made, it was blown from a lump of hot glass that was spun around very quickly. This glass then spread out due to centripetal force, and more of it gathered at the edges than in the center. When the glass was then put into a frame after it had cooled down, it was easier to install with a thicker edge at the bottom. So what makes glass different, and how is it made? To find out, we've come to Bristol Blue Glass. Glass is in fact something called an amorphous solid. It's formed when the molecules of molten glass are super cooled. And they're cooled so quickly that they don't have time to form the regular repeating pattern of a crystal, but are instead all jumbled together randomly. But for us to understand the properties of this amazing material, we need to start with its raw ingredients. Uh, this is what we call batch. So this is the raw ingredients which we use for melting our glass. It almost looks like gravel. So it gets melted in the furnace at 1200 degrees centigrade. And then when we come in the next day, it will be ready for the next day's production. The principal component of glass is sand, which is made of molecules of silicon dioxide. Molten silicon dioxide can be blown or molded into various shapes before it cools to form silica glass. Bristol blue glass add impurities to their glass to alter its properties and even its color. But I wouldn't want to see a gorilla in a glass shop, so why did Bristol Zoo Gardens decide to build an entire enclosure out of something which is normally so fragile? One of the biggest things was how to incorporate access for our guests to walk through and still maintain as much space for the gorillas as possible, mm. uh, which is where we come up with this amazing idea of having a, a glass hide. Jock is currently around 31 stone, so you yeah. want to make sure that he can stomp around on the glass. <laughs> and actually, when the engineers designed it, I believe they looked at sort of a whole family of gorillas charging at the glass at wow. the same time and kind of looked at the force that would incur to make sure that it was, you know, fully going to cope with our group, which it does. So the glass in this enclosure has been treated in such a way that it's able to support the weight of these incredible animals, allowing us to get up close and personal with them. And innovations in glass strengthening technology has also impacted your own daily life if you own one of these. Most smartphones and tablets make use of something called Gorilla Glass, which is made from a combination of aluminium, silicon, oxygen and sodium ions. This aluminosilicate compound undergoes a process called ion exchange, which replaces the sodium ions for potassium ions. This causes the surface of the glass to compress, which gives it its extreme strength in comparison to regular glass. So I have here some glass which has been treated in a similar way. So this strengthened glass should be able to take on a head-on impact from a hammer, in theory. And it should have the same weakness as Gorilla Glass, which means that if we impact it on the edge, it should shatter. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's give it a go. Not bad, okay. We'll try a little bit stronger. Okay, pretty hard. There's a slight chip there in the surface, but it hasn't shattered. Let's now see if we give it a similar impact from the side, what happens. There we go. Even just a glancing blow has meant that we've shattered that glass all the way from one end to the other. So what we can learn from this is that if you're going to drop your phone on the floor, you want to do it so it lands face down rather than from the side. With increased competition to search for the next new material which is going to be even stronger than Gorilla Glass, there's been lots of speculation about something called Sapphire Glass. Now, sapphire is the third hardest material in the world after mosinite and diamond. But sapphire isn't an amorphous solid like glass. Instead, it's an extremely strong crystal made up of aluminium oxide. 
So giant balls of synthetic sapphire are cut using a high precision laser and used in everything from bulletproof glass to watches and even supermarket barcode scanners. And this sapphire could be heading to a device near you very soon. For more on the science of supercooled liquids, watch Eddie show you how to make instant ice at home. Or perhaps you've ever wondered, what color is a mirror? And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.